Hi, my name is Ryan Languish and this is Ludo Lodge, a channel about sparking growth in your journey as a game designer. And today I'm going to be doing a mechanism spotlight for Santorini, which is a two-player abstract strategy game designed by Gordon Hamilton, in which the players are trying to build up structures with the goal of having their worker climb onto the highest level of the structure to win the game. So the game begins with just a 5x5 five five grid, with each player having two workers in the grid. And on your turn, you have to pick one of those two workers to move with, and then after you move, you have to build to an adjacent square. And when you build, you simply add to any existing structures that were already there. Now while you're moving, if you're adjacent to a structure that's just of level one, you have the option to move up onto that, and you can always move on to a structure that's one higher than the one you're currently on. So ultimately, you want to get to the point where you have a three-high structure that you have the opportunity to step up onto, and then that ends up winning you the game. This may sound very similar to other abstract games that you, you've played or heard of, where you know both players are trying to kind of work to build up this win state um, in a way that finally when they complete the win state, they win the game. I mean, even going back to games like as simple as tic-tac-toe, right? You're trying to just achieve that win state. Um, but I think there's a couple things that make Santorini a little different and interesting. Um, the first of which is the fact that all of those buildings are shared. It's not like tic-tac-toe where I have X's and you have O's. When I'm building something and if I build a structure that's multiple levels high, that's just as eligible to be used by you to win the game as it is by me. So that adds another kind of layer of tension into how do I build in such a way that it's helping me but not maybe backfiring and giving you the opportunity um, to get the upper hand? But the second thing, which is kind of what I wanted to focus on in this video, um, is the fact that once that building gets to the highest level, there's a, a new option that kind of comes into play where a player can build to that building and put on a dome which is the kind of the top thing that goes onto the structure, these blue domes. And what's interesting about that is that blue dome now essentially makes that a dead space. You can never step onto something with a dome. There's no way to ever change it. I guess I, I shouldn't say there's no way. The game provides um, kind of this layer on top of, of god powers that are kind of extreme variable player powers. And some of those may let you do some wild things out of the game's normal um, constraints. But it, with just the base kind of Santorini formula, once one of those buildings has a dome, it's just out of the game. It's, it's, it's like a block that's blocking the rest of the, um, the play area. And what's, what, what is very interesting about this is the fact that it's such an easy move. So if, I, if I've gotten to the point where I have a three high building that I have the opportunity to step onto, all it takes is one of your two workers being just a space away and they can just step a space and cap it. And now not only can I not win on that, you know, on the next turn if I was in position, but it's taken away all my progress on that. Like that building, all that work I did to maybe build that up, I can't use anymore. And so it kind of, you know, if building kind of increases my chancing, chances of winning over time, suddenly that cap kind of just resets it. Instead of just, you know, some games are more of a tug of war element where a, a blocking play kind of just hinders me a little bit, you know, but I can kind of work around it. Where in this case, it kind of eliminates what had been my, my uh, strategy toward, towards the win condition. This is has some interesting um, side effects, one of which is that it's easy to feel like you're always still in the game because even if your opponent is getting close to maybe setting up that win condition, as long as you're in position, you can potentially take it away entirely, which can, can help to not feel like one player is maybe getting way ahead than another player which sometimes happens in abstract games. If it's games like, I mean, if you think of something like chess where my pieces are getting removed from the board, we could get to a point where it's very clear like somebody has the board advantage over the other player and I'm really on my heels. And that can still happen a little bit in Santorini, but it's a little bit more masked, I think, um, in that I always feel like I can completely block that win condition for you um, as long as I'm positioning myself cleverly. Now, in practice, 
it plays out a little differently because both players know this, right? If I know that you can so easily cap my win condition, I am not gonna just simply make it and let you cap it. That doesn't do me any good. And so I find it fascinating how Santorini actually plays in that my goal isn't just to kind of construct that thing that I can win on, but rather it's to construct that structure that could be a winning structure while I'm in position to step on it, but while my opponent is out of position so that they have no way that they can actually block it. And that combination is really interesting and it, I think it leaves a lot of room for clever play. And a lot of the game is less about building that structure to three high and more about building in a way that kind of controls where your opponent has access to and kind of how, you know, if, if I start kind of building walls that you're kind of walled off and then maybe I can build my structure in the other direction, um, it, it, it kind of takes some foresight to kind of build up this win condition as opposed to just I build it three high and take advantage of it. And so I was trying to think of other games that kind of do something like this where it's kind of ends up being a sneaky win condition in that when I win, it's because I kind of was able to sneak in that three high tower in a way that you didn't expect where it's too late for the other player to be able to react and do something about it. And I was having trouble coming up with other examples that have something like that where it's very easy to make a blocking move. And so the strategy is much more around how do I sneak that win condition in a way that you are out of position to make that blocking move. I'm interested to hear if you know of any games that do something similar like that. If you do, leave it down in the comments. I'd love to read through that. If you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.